When we looked at the Poisson process, uh, this was a process that was counting arrivals. So we always knew what the transitions of the process would be. Right? A transition would be perhaps one more thing will arrive and it will increase by one. So we didn't have to worry about where the process was going to move to. We always knew that the process was going to move up by one. The only thing we had to worry about was the amount of time until it moves. So Poisson processes that do this, uh, sorry, stochastic processes that do this, when we always know that the movements will be increases by one, are called counting processes. And obviously they're easier than general stochastic processes because we don't have to worry about where the move is to, it's an increase by one, we only have to worry about the amount of time. So in this section of the notes, we're going to look at two other examples of counting processes. We've already seen the Poisson process. Our first case will be called what's called a birth process. And our second case will be what's called a time inhomogeneous Poisson process. So here we're going to talk about the birth process. And in fact, we're going to start with what's called the simple birth process, uh, which is the most basic kind of uh, model for like uh, how a population gets bigger. For example, uh, the division of the cell into many different cells, or as a very simple model of the population of an animal or something. So we're going to start with that simple birth process. So our simple birth process is going to start with there being one individual, which might be a person or an animal or a cell, and after an exponential lambda amount of time, it's going to have an offspring. So after exponential lambda amount of time, it has an offspring. So then we're at x t equals 2. Now each of those two individuals will have an offspring after an exponential lambda amount of time. So each has offspring after. So one of them has an offspring after exponential lambda amount of time, and the other has an offspring after an exponential lambda amount of time. So how long is it until the first one of them has an offspring? Well, that's going to be the minimum of two exponential lambdas, which is exponential two lambda. Let's write that down. So, first offspring is after the minimum of two exponential lambda times. And we looked at the minimum of exponential distributions back in uh, section 14. In particular, the minimum of two exponential lambdas is an exponential two lambda. Remember that the expectation of an exponential distribution is one over the parameter, so that means it takes half as much time to get this offspring. So after exponential two lambda amount of time, we have our third individual come along. And now, the individual that already that didn't have the offspring, by the memoryless property of the exponential distribution, they've still got an exponential lambda amount of time. The person that the individual that did have the offspring, they're going to have another offspring after an exponential lambda of time, and this new third uh, individual is going to have an offspring after an exponential lambda of time. So then it's we get an offspring from the first of them after exponential three lambda and so on, and so on, and so on. You know, uh, when there are n individuals, we get an offspring in exponential n lambda amount of times. So we have the holding times at exponential distributions, but their rates are increasing. In the Poisson process, it was exponential lambda, exponential lambda, exponential lambda. But for this simple birth process, it's exponential lambda, exponential two lambda, exponential three lambda, exponential four lambda, and they become more and more uh, individuals. So the simple birth process is a what is the first example of a more uh, wide-ranging definition, which is this: the birth process starts at some x zero, and then 
the jump times are the sum of the waiting times, and they're exponential lambda n, where now lambda n can depend on lambda. So that's the more general definition. Let's see, let's see some examples of that, just so we can see what's going on here. Well, if, so if we take the starting position to be, we start with one individual, and we set this variable lambda sub n to be n times lambda, and that's the simple birth process that we just described, right? where the first offspring is exponential lambda, the second one is exponential 2 lambda, the third one is exponential 3 lambda, exponential 4 lambda, and so on. Uh, how about this example? If we take x0 equals 0, so we start with no one, and we let lambda n just equal lambda, being the same every time, can you work out what that gives us? That gives us our old friend the Poisson process, right? because that starts from 0 and has a constant rate. And obviously we can come up with more examples. For example, if we put x0 equal 1 again, like the simple birth process, and we put lambda n equals n lambda plus mu, you can think of that as being like a birth process, but when you're also getting immigration at rate mu. So you've got this kind of n lambda, which is the birth process, but then you've got this mu, which is immigration into the process at some rate mu. So you can model like lots of uh, biological things this way by having birth and immigration, maybe migration out, maybe death. You know, you can do other things that way. So that's a definition in terms of the waiting times being exponential distributions. Well, while we're here, why not give, let's give an infinitesimal time period definition like we did for the Poisson process. So I think it should be easy to see that what we want to look at is the probability xt plus tau equals some number of uh, individuals j given xt equals j. So this one would be the keeping a consistent number. And that will probably happen, but there's a kind of lambda, or here lambda j times tau probability that it doesn't happen. Similarly, probably the probability we have one arrival is, as we saw before, lambda times tau, or here lambda j times tau, plus some lower order terms. Or maybe we'll have uh, two or more arrivals, but as before, that's incredibly unlikely. That's just lower order terms, little o of tau. So note that this is exactly the same as the definition for the Poisson process, except our lambda has been replaced by lambda j, because the rate of arrival depends on how many individuals there are. And so, yet again, continuing as we did before, we can write an expression for pj t plus tau, so that's the probability that at time t plus tau there are j individuals, and again, uh, as before, uh, we'll do this for uh, j greater than 1. Uh, as before, there might be, uh, we might already be at j but get no arrivals. Uh, we might have been at j minus 1 but got one arrival. Or uh, maybe there weren't any others. Uh, maybe there were fewer than j minus 2, but that's incredibly unlikely that would have jumped up in that time, so that's lower order terms. And again, as we did before, we'll take a pj over to the left-hand side, we'll divide everything through by tau, and we'll send tau to 0 to get rid of the little o of tau and to give ourselves a a differential equation. So by the same process we've done everywhere else, we get uh, p prime j of t, the derivative equals minus lambda j pj t 
t plus lambda j minus 1 p j minus 1 of t. Notice uh, that this is the forward equation, right? And it's the same forward equation uh, we have for the Poisson process, except that now we've got these lambda j and lambda j minus 1 instead of just lambda. Uh, similarly, uh, we have initial conditions, uh, pj naught equals naught, uh, and we can get uh, the j equals 1 term as well as being uh, p1 prime of t equals minus lambda 1 p1 t. I won't give all the details there because it's basically exactly the same as it was for the Poisson process. Uh, we saw when we were doing the Poisson process that we could uh, solve these uh, explicitly. We got a Poisson distribution. And so for some cases of birth processes, uh, you can solve these explicitly. For example, uh, the simple birth process, this equation can be solved exactly, uh, but I'm not going to show it because you're going to show it yourself in problem sheet 8 where you'll find a solution to this forward equation in the case of the simple birth process.